Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Wanted to take a moment to let you know how much we appreciate uh, each and every one of you. We appreciate the time that you take when you drop by and tune in to these lessons. And uh, I hope that uh, your week is going well. Hope that uh, 2020 is wrapping up on a positive and good note for you. And uh, trust and pray that you're uh, preparing for a, a, a better and uh, more meaningful 2021 here in just a few days. Thank you again for stopping by. As we begin today, I uh, just wanted to give you a couple of reminders. Um, you can still uh, take an opportunity to give uh, year-end giving to our church. Uh, two primary ways that if you want to get in on end-of-the-year giving that you can make that happen. Uh, one is to use our text to give, 855 928 2110, and uh, that'll take you to a link that you can give uh, through your text, or you can go to our website, www.btownnas.org, click on the giving link, and that'll take you to the site where you can also uh, give uh, through uh, our online giving and through our website. We want to thank you for your faithfulness over the last 12 months uh, to the Brownstown Church of the Nazarene. We appreciate everything that you have given and everything that you do to support our church and our ministries. And uh, we're looking forward to the coming year and even better days uh, ahead as we uh, think about all God might want to do in our times together uh, this coming year. So thank you for your faithfulness. Tonight, um, I, I want to invite you to wrestle with the following question. When was the last time you were amazed by what God did or what God was doing? In, in other words, I want you to consider tonight, when was the last time that you were just in awe, where you were shocked, where you were amazed, where you had your socks knocked off over what God had done in your life or what God was in the midst of doing in your life. Now, if I could piggyback on that question for a moment tonight, I would ask you this, um, how, long, how long has it been uh, since you were amazed? And if you've been amazed, let's just start over. Go back. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Appreciate each and every one of you and appreciate the time that you take to drop by and be a part of these gatherings. I know they're not um, ideal and they're not the way that we wish they were, but they're working for the moment. And so we do thank you and we appreciate you taking the opportunity and taking the time uh, to spend it with us on a Wednesday evening. As we begin tonight, I want to give you just a couple of reminders. We do have a morning worship service on Sunday at 10 o'clock, and we invite you to come and be a part of that. And we also want to let you know that it's not too late to get in on end-of-the-year giving. If you're going to do that, there's two primary ways that you'll want to use to take advantage of last-minute year-end giving to the church. The first is use our text to give. That number is 855-928-2110. And if you'll type that number in through text, it'll take you to a link uh, where you can give uh, through your phone and uh, you could also go to our website, www.btownnaz.org, click on our giving link, and that will also get you to an opportunity in a place where you can give um, and take advantage of a final opportunity to give uh, to the ministries of the church before uh, 2020 comes to an end and comes to a close. We do want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for your faithfulness over the last 12 months. Uh, I know that these have been difficult days and hard times for some. And uh, we have faced a lot of uncertainty, but I want to thank you for being faithful in your giving. I want to thank you for being faithful in your attendance. I want to be. I want to thank you for being faithful and tuning in uh, to talks and opportunities like this. And uh, like I said a minute ago, we know that it's not the ideal way, uh, but we sure are appreciative of each and every one of you. As we begin tonight, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll just jump right into our lesson tonight. Father God, thank you so very much for everything that you have done for us. We thank you that as a, another year comes to a close, that we can look back and we can see how faithful you've been to us. We appreciate all that you've done. We're grateful for it, and we want to say thank you tonight. 
And I pray you'll meet with us now in these few moments that we spend together. May they encourage us. May they challenge us. May they help us in our journey with you. We love you tonight. Bless us now. Be with everything that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, tonight I want to invite you to wrestle with this question. When was the last time that you were amazed by what God was doing or by what God had done? In other words, when was the last time that you really just had your socks knocked off over what God was doing in your life? When was the last time that you just stood absolutely amazed at what you were witnessing God doing in your life during that period of time? When was the last time you were amazed by what God was doing? Now, let me piggyback on that by asking you this. If it's been a while since you were amazed, why has it been a while? Has it been a while because God has just stopped working in your life? Has it been a while because God's been busy working with someone else and has kind of put you on hold? Has it been a while because God has forgotten about you? Has it been a while for some other reason? Or could it be tonight that it's been a while because we in our humanness have failed to take the time and failed to take the opportunity to notice what God was up to. As I've thought back over the last 12 months in these last couple of days, I realized that there have been far more times when God was working good in my life when I didn't realize it. And there were a lot of times when God was doing things that I didn't actually perceive that he was doing them, but it didn't mean that he wasn't working. And I can look back now and I can see countless times and countless ways that God was working. And I really am tonight amazed at everything that God has done and everything that God has brought me through. I wonder tonight, when's the last time you were amazed by what God was doing in your life? You know, when you read the Bible, you discover fairly quickly uh, that we serve a God who does amazing things. When you really begin to, to analyze and you really begin to study what God has done in his creation, what God has done in the world, what God has done in his word, you realize rather quickly that our God is an amazing God. The Bible reminds us time and time again, over and over again, that God is amazing and does amazing things. And tonight I'm going to invite you to consider and I'm going to invite you to to be amazed at what God is up to and what God is doing. I want to share a couple passages of scripture with you tonight and then I just want to invite you to, to, to pause and to look back and to look ahead and be amazed at what God is up to. I want to begin by reading a passage of scripture in Habakkuk chapter 1 and uh, just a verse or two from this particular minor prophet who carries a major message. And when we look at these words, we're, we're going to see that Habakkuk is prophesying to a group of people who find themselves in a desperate situation. Uh, They had rebelled against God. They had disobeyed God. They had not heed the word of God. And God was beginning and getting ready to carry out punishment on these people. And in the midst of it, the prophet Habakkuk is asking God, God, what are you up to? God, what are you doing? God, what are you going to do? And I want you to hear what God says to the prophet. God says to the prophet, he says, look at the nations, watch, And be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that if you were were told, you would not believe, even if I did tell you. Um, God is saying to the prophet, Habakkuk, I'm getting ready to do something. I'm getting ready to do something so amazing that if I told you what it was, you would not believe me. Now, there's a a school of thought, and it's not wrong, but there's a school of thought um, that that God is is holding back all the information on what he's going to do as he carries out his wrath. Uh, In other words, God is getting ready to say to the the prophet, you know, I'm going to do something, and and it isn't what you think it is. It isn't going to be this great, wonderful thing. I've got judgment getting ready to be poured out on you, and it's not going to be a pretty thing. But there's also the element uh, of a great promise. It's known as the messianic promise. 
And, and what God is saying to Habakkuk is, you know, there are some bleak days coming for you. There are some hard days coming for you. There's some hardship that you're going to walk through. You're going to see some things that you're not going to believe. You're going to see some things happen that you never thought you would see happen. But I want to give you hope, Habakkuk. I want you to know that, that there's coming a day when something even greater is going to shake down. Something even greater is going to take place. And if I were to tell you everything about it, you wouldn't even be able to. To believe me, it's going to be amazing. And he's talking, of course, about sending Messiah into the world. God is promising a better day. God is promising that on the heels of grief and sorrow, joy will soon and someday return. Now, I want to invite you to fast forward to, with me to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 2. Uh, you know about Luke chapter 2. It's all about the Christmas story. We spent a lot of time reading that over the last few weeks. But I want you to hear what verses 2, uh, excuse me, what verses 16 through 18 say. Here's what Luke tells us. Luke says, so they hurried off <clears throat> and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they've been told about this child. Now listen to this. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So here we see the New Testament is now underway. God has ushered in the Messiah, the one that he promised through the Old Testament prophets. And Luke tells us that the shepherds get word of this. They receive message about this and they hurry off to see it. And they're amazed at what they've seen and what they saw. And as they're returning home, they tell others what they saw and what they heard and what they have been told. And then Luke tells us that every person who they told about it, was amazed at what they had been told. And what we see is that even from the very beginning of Jesus' arrival here on earth, people were amazed at who he was. People were amazed at the circumstances surrounding his birth and his arrival. It really is a fascinating thought. The, the God had promised to back us something amazing was going to happen. We get to Luke chapter 2, and we're just two chapters into the Gospel of Luke, and we're already being told that people are amazed at this person called Jesus. Now let's fast forward just a little bit farther today. If you go to um, Luke chapter 2, a little bit farther, verses 45 and 47, uh, you'll see that Jesus and his family have been in Jerusalem. They've been at the temple. They're on their way home. They get about halfway there. They realize Jesus isn't with them. They go back to do a search. They find him in the temple. And here's what Luke says about that. He says, when they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And now listen to what verse 40 says, 47 says. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. You see, now we see Jesus. He's not a baby anymore. He's 12 years old. He's in the temple. He's listening to the religious leaders. He's dialoguing with them. He's asking them questions. He's telling them what he knows about the scriptures. And it says that everyone who heard him was amazed. You see, not only were they amazed at his birth, but now they're amazed at him as a young man. Everywhere that Jesus goes, everything that Jesus does, people are noticing. And this idea of of being amazed is beginning to build. Now, if we journey a little bit farther into the Gospel of Luke, we come to chapter 4, and um, here's what it says in chapter 4. It says, Then he rolled up the scroll, him being Jesus, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. 
See, now Jesus has begun his earthly ministry, and he's in the synagogue one day, and he's beginning to teach. He's beginning to read. Somebody hands him the prophet of Isaiah. He reads from that scroll. He, he closes the scroll up. He hands it back to the person who gave it to him, and he says to the crowd, this scripture has been fulfilled in your midst right here today. Jesus is announcing that I'm here. Jesus is announcing that Messiah has come. And Luke tells us that everyone who listened to him that day was amazed by what he said. So now we see that the people were amazed at his birth. They're amazed at him as a young child. But now they're also amazed of, at him as a, a teacher uh, teaching the good news uh, of God and sharing what God was doing in his life. People were amazed. If we fast forward to Luke chapter 5, verses 25 and 26, we find this story. Immediately he stood in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things. This is a story of Jesus healing a lame man and forgiving the lame man of his sins. And again, Luke tells us that everybody who heard it and everybody who saw the miracle and everybody who heard his teaching was amazed at what Jesus had done. You see, now they're not only amazed at his teaching, but now they're beginning to become amazed at his healing. In Luke chapter 9, we find another story. It says this, it says, even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were all what? They were all amazed at the greatness of God. While everyone was marveling at all this that Jesus did, he said to his disciples. Um, what we see taking place here is that um, Jesus' disciples were trying to do a miracle. They were trying to cast out demons. They couldn't, couldn't do it. Jesus comes onto the scene. At his mere words, Jesus cast out the demons. And Luke tells us that everyone who saw it was amazed at the greatness of God. They were amazed that Jesus had the power to cast out demons. In Luke chapter 11, we find a, another story. It's verse number 14. It says Jesus was driving out the, the demon that was mute. When the demon left him, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. Again, we see the theme of the people being amazed at what Jesus is doing. I want to share one more with you today. It's found in Luke chapter 24. Jesus has been crucified. It's the third day. Um, the women have gone to the tomb to finish the burial preparations for his body. And then Luke says the, this. He says, in addition, some of our women amazed us. There's that word again, amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came out and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Now we're at the end of, uh, of his ministry, and we're told that, that the disciples were amazed because they, they were being told that Jesus had risen from the dead. They, they, they're being told that the ultimate miracle, the miracle of all miracles had taken place. Jesus was alive. I, I guess tonight what I want you to see is that we serve a great God. We serve a God that loves us and cares about us. And we see that every step of the way, the people were amazed at what God was doing. They were amazed at his birth. They were amazed at the knowledge that he possessed as a young man. They were amazed at his ability to teach with an authority that no one else had ever taught with. They were amazed at his ability to heal the broken. They were amazed at his power, the, the power to cast out demons with just a spoken word. And then they were amazed at his resurrection. At every point in his life, the people were amazed. And Luke is one of the only gospel writers, in fact, probably the only gospel writer, Writers who really paints this picture of where real people are living. He shows us the brokenness of people. 
He shows us the hurts that people are facing. He shows us the difficulty that people are going through. And then he shows us that when Jesus shows up in their life, they are amazed at what Jesus can do for them. Tonight, I want to ask you, when's the last time you've been amazed at what Jesus was doing in your life? When's the last time you were amazed at what Jesus had done for you? You know, as we face a new year, I'm challenging myself to take time to be amazed at what God is doing. And I want to challenge you to do the same thing tonight. I want to challenge you that as we we embark on 2021, we don't know what it'll hold. We don't know what it'll bring. We don't know what will happen. But we know that God will be faithful. We know that God will be true. We know that God will be there. And so I'm inviting us as a church to take time to notice what God is up to and to be amazed. I'm confident tonight that that if we'll, we'll just take some time, we'll discover just how great God is and how much God is doing in our life. I want to leave you with these thoughts as we enter into a new year. I want to challenge you. Be amazed and be thankful. Be thankful for what God is doing. Be thankful for what God has done. Be thankful for what God is going to do. Then I want to challenge you to be hopeful. Cling to the hope that we have in knowing who he is. Cling to the hope that regardless of what is going on, God will work out a way. Cling to the hope that regardless of what is happening, God is in control. God is there. God is present. And he's not going to leave us or forsake us or abandon us. Be hopeful as we face and head into 2021. And then I want to challenge you to be available. Be available to what God wants to do with your life. Be available to the ways that God wants to use you. Be available to give your time. Be available to give your your money. Be available to give your resources. Be available to give all of yourself back to God. If we'll be thankful, if we'll be hopeful, if we'll be available, we'll look back on this year. We'll look back on the coming year. Next year at this time, we'll be able to look back. And we will be amazed at everything God has done. Be amazed tonight. When's the last time you were amazed? Take a moment. Look back. Look ahead. Look at your present situation. And be amazed at what God is up to. We serve a great God. He was faithful then. He's faithful now. And he'll be faithful forever. Let's pray tonight. Lord, help us to see what you're up to. Help us to see and understand what you're doing. Help us to be quick to give you praise. May we be amazed over what we see you doing in our life. Like those who came before us who were amazed at your teaching, your power, your healing, your resurrection, and everything in between. May we be people who are amazed by the God that we serve. Help us to be faithful and help us to be thankful. Help us to be hopeful. Help us to be available. And Lord, help us to cling to you in this coming year. And may may it be the greatest and best year we've ever had. We love you tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. I pray you'll have a great rest of the week. Have a wonderful new year. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday as we once again gather to worship our King of Kings and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.